welcome back to The Tube, the programme that distorts the facts and also often distorts my face. Doesn't Paula, distort is facts. There, Paula, is there any truth in the rumour that you and Bob um, recently uh, had uh, a uh, shag? I actually can't comment on that, but he does have a new single out. That's very nice, yes. sir. And so we took this opportunity, asked by Paula, to go and visit him. And then him, asked by me. To go and visit him in the countryside, which I did, and here I am doing that. Brown nosing. Well, I think we should go back and begin with those early humble years. Yes. Those, those humble I'm... years when you were a mere nobody. And uh, uh, in your book, you, you have a lot of jobs. Let's hear it for the front town rights in praise for the ridiculous stage, the ridiculous stage, the most of Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. What we're trying to do is raise as much money as we can. Probably very rarely in, in uh, your life can you actually say that something is critically important and that was critically important for me to do. Um, at the same time, um, it isn't, it's something I have to do but music is something that I want to do mm. and um, I derive far more satisfaction out of being able to write a good pop tune which most people think is a very stupid thing of me to say but you don't get much satisfaction out of the Band-Aid thing, or a sense of achievement, I do when I write a decent tune. And so the gap between what I really have to do without sounding like John Wayne and what I want to do, i.e. the music, there must be a point where the two can coexist. Mm -hmm. And now that it's less hectic at the Band-Aid thing, I think maybe I've arrived at that point. 
Do you think it's damaged your musical activities at all, being so heavily involved with the band? I'd it's think. damaged in that I haven't been able to do anything for two years. Um, where it's helped it is in that I know far more people of music who, you know, came along to help and play on the record, which was one, brilliant, and two, very good at getting me back into it. So it, it helped in, in lots of ways. Where it didn't help is that people may no longer accept me as a pop singer. He, uh, usually he's better than that anyway, so... You know, it's cool. I mean, I know he's a mate of your missus and all that, but I, I don't know whether for an album... It's an important album. You know, we should, uh... Give him another go. Uh, Amazing. Oh, it's great, actually. Oh. Um, well, of course, you've got an enormous amount of celebrities playing on the album. So give us the lowdown, then, of some of the musicians that you've had. Well, first off, I did two tracks with Dave Stewart in L.A., sort of the world of your rhythmics crowd, including Annie, who did a lot of the backing vocals on the two tracks that I did there. And um, at the same time as I was recording, Alison Moy, I was recording her album at A&M Studios, so she was with Annie doing some backing vocals. Then Maria McKee from Lone Justice. What a fantastic... Well, yeah. they did the backing vocals together. All yeah, good. and uh, they do sound brilliant together, and often lead singers don't work as backing singers. They sound like angels, literally. And then Clem Burke, the old blondie drummer, played drums on one of the tracks, and Omar Hakim, who did Let's Dance and Sting's album, is on the single, this is the word calling. And then back here, it's mainly him, R. Hein, um, who's playing practically everything except for Eric and yourself. Eric did a lot of guitar, Midge did some guitar. So Eric um, Clapton, Jules Holland, Midge are the main English. Jamie West Orham from The Fix. Um, the three guitar players here were Jamie from The Fix, uh, Midge and Eric Clapton. And you're the only piano player except for Rupert actually on it, except, and Pat from the, the Eurythmics. And that's about it. Did you know that, that today, in fact, when this programme is broadcast, it will be the 11th anniversary of you first performing live with the Boomtown Rats, but first we were called something different, I forget what you the were The Nightlife called. Thugs. For half the gig we were yes. called that, and then I chalked up the Boomtown Rats on the blackboard. Well, I've, I've heard a lot, of, I've heard, I suppose, half of the record, and it sounds to me, and may, maybe when this programme comes out, it already will be, but it sounds to me like it's likely to be a large worldwide success. So I say good luck to you. I said. Here's a plug for your new record. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jules. <laughs>